Hey everyone, welcome to Signal Processing with Paul. My name is Paul and I'm a researcher who looks at the intersection of artificial intelligence and signal processing. And what I wanna do in this video is give an explanation as to why these generative AI image models are really bad at generating text. And a lot of times you'll see this, you'll see some picture that looks at least reasonably photorealistic or perhaps artistic, but you look at the text and it's complete trash. So what I'm gonna to try to do is explain why this is the case. So what I've done here in Dolly, I've gone to Dolly and basically told it to create a menu for an ice cream stand. And this is what we see. We see these sorts of, of things. It, it looks like it could at least be a menu. It gets some of the ice cream and, and the positions of things right. But look at the actual symbols. The, the text is just, it's just garbage. It's nonsense. It can't even spell cream right. Now, sometimes it, it does. I was actually surprised by this. I would expect it to get the ice cream part right. And then the rest of this just kind of look like this. In fact, this is worse than I was expecting, but this helps to prove my point. So what's actually going on here? Why is it so bad? Why can it not do this when it can do so many other things so well or so realistically well? Well, the main thing is, is that AI just doesn't know what language is. And one clue is that it can get words like ice cream or Costco or Walmart that it can represent, um, which is enough for it to be able to memorize these things, but it doesn't actually understand language. Now, Ashok Virahagavan is an AI researcher in computer vision, and he taught me computer vision. And he once made a remark that a model is only as good as the data it is trained on, right? It can't just learn stuff that's not in the training data, that's not encoded within the training data in some generalized way. And when you think about it from this perspective, the training data for these AI generative image models is just images. It's never asked to predict text, and it doesn't actually know the association between text and image beyond the fact that these images have some sort of textual description. But this isn't going to count, right? Because this text is there in the form of metadata, and it's tokenized, which is just a fancy way of saying we encode the text that's there in metadata in some vector space. We're not actually relating that text anything in the image space. So that's the main difference here. Um, there's no connection that the AI model has between the tokenized text that it has as a vector and the actual words in different space that say these particular things. Now, if you say, if it has a picture of Walmart and the text is Walmart, it might be able to understand the shape of the word Walmart there, but it's not able to form cohesive sen sentences because it doesn't actually understand the syntax of language and how could it? It's never presented any syntactical information about language. It'd be kind of ridiculous to expect it to be able to do really well at any sort of language task. Now, consider an object like an orange. We understand that the word orange refers to a certain type of fruit, which we connect um, in our knowledge to a tree that produces the orange. We understand that this tree grows it. And we also understand things about the orange that the AI model doesn't, like it has a certain taste, perhaps a certain texture. When you open it up, there's a certain visual about this. And the question we can ask is, how is it that the computer can infer that the word orange refers to all of these objects? And it certainly isn't going to be understand the taste part because it can't taste anything. But one way is that it just understands or it learns that the word orange is associated with all these particular things. It understands that the word orange refers to this tree, it understands because it sees a picture of, you know, a round orange object that this could be an orange, and it also sees a picture of the inside of the orange. But it doesn't actually understand the continuity or connection between these. It never actually sees somebody picking this orange, having this consistent object, and then opening it up and being able to see the inside, and then actually having the experience of tasting it. And as a result, you know, I would argue that the AI model still doesn't really know what an orange is, at least know it in the way that we do. It can sort of connect the dots using pattern recognition, right? As we talked about, it sees the word orange in all these circumstances, but it doesn't really experience the orange in the way that we do. As a result, you should never expect an AI model to be able to write a description of a menu that understands that the orange is a tangy fruit if it doesn't even know what taste is, either know it in terms of having the experience of tasting it or having any sort of relationship between taste, tanginess, and orange. It's just not really connected. So there's a thought experiment in philosophy that came about by Frank Jackson. He wrote an article called Epiphenomenal Qualia in 1982 and then sort of extended this in his 1986 argument, What Mary Didn't Know. I think that's a play on the Mary Did You Know, The Christmas Carol. And I actually first learned about this argument from not from philosophy or AI, but from the work of video game writer Kotaro Uchikoshi, probably in Virtue's Last Reward. And Mary's Room is a thought experiment that imagines a colorblind scientist, her name is Mary, who is an expert 
about vision. So she's colorblind, but she can describe everything there is to know about vision. So she can tell you how rods and cones work, how the electromagnetic spectrum works, everything there is to know about the color red, but she's still colorblind. Um, the question is, does she really know what it's like to experience red or to see red? And we can put this another way too, right? Imagine she has some surgery that fixes her color blindness and she's somehow now able to see the color red. The question is, has she learned something new about color from her experience or her qualia that her descriptive understanding lacked? And that's really the key question. And, and I think this goes on a long line of philosophers, um, people in part like Thomas Nagel, who has his paper, What Is It Like to Be a Bat? Which is fantastic. Also some of the philosophy of Martin Heidegger and Hubert Dreyfus, a little bit after, who talks a lot about being or experiencing the world um, being really important. And I think this is particularly the thing. The An AI, a generative AI model does not experience the world the way we do. And as a result, we shouldn't expect it to be able to generate language because it doesn't have the same experience with language. Now, one possible response to this or one challenge to this view is taking a look at ChatGPT. They say, hey, look, ChatGPT seems to be able to understand certain things about text. It's at least able to create connections between text to generate reasonable sounding text, why is that not possible in something like Dolly? Well, potentially it's possible, but keep in mind that ChatGPT tokenizes language so there's no ambiguity in representation. The same letter A has the same bit representation pattern that you, there's no ambiguity here. Each letter and each word is tokenized in pretty much the exact same way, which removes a lot of the ambiguity when we have visual representation. Whereas trying to learn language from just looking at images alone, how would we get away from the fact that, hey, there can be different fonts, there can be different colors, there can be different pictures. Text in a tokenized sense is just a numerical vector. It's pretty easy. It's pretty cut and dry. Computers really like being able to do this. Image space is pixel values at each particular point in the image, but it's very difficult to get from here to some general form of, of language that removes all this ambiguity. And it's simply because this is the wrong representation. Image space is the wrong representation space for representing text. Now, ChatGPT only has language. It doesn't have any images. And the idea of ChatGPT is also based on this inductive sort of principle. So ChatGPT doesn't experience the world we do. It cannot generate images the way we would expect it to because it has no visual experience with the world. But it can generate text by just looking at patterns between text. And it does a really, really impressive job. Now, some people like to ask, well, could ChatGPT possibly be conscious? This is a really difficult question, and I would recommend you look at David Chalmers' work on the hard problem of consciousness. It's difficult to even be able to answer this question in theory, let alone be able to give it an answer, yes or no, if we don't even really understand what consciousness is well enough to define it and be able to detect it in that particular point. Now, considering Dolly and ChatGPT, consider how we learn a language. We don't receive tokenized text, nor do we see a bunch of sort of disparate images. We have a consistent temporal understanding of the world that we experience the world with, and we're basically told things, but we also associate that with other things beyond just information. And, and you think about Mary's room, right? There's other information based on our conscious and sensory experience that we use to associate with language. And that's why we have emotional reactions to words and numbers that a computer simply does not have. I mean, some people like everyone has their favorite number. Is, is it fair to say a computer has a favorite number? And if so, how would we know this? As a result, you know, imagine how could a computer know that an ice cream that is made of poop would somehow taste poorly and an ice cream that tastes like vanilla or cookies and cream is good if it doesn't even know what taste is, if it's never really tasted anything as well. And as a result, I would argue that an AI model is missing something. These generative AI models, yeah, it can make a, an ice cream cone that looks like it's made out of poop, but it's missing something that's essential to language, um, at least the language that we experience, which is, of course, our type of experience with the world. So what would it take for an AI model to not be so bad at text? What would it take for an AI model to be good at language, or at least an AI image model? Well, the first would be some sort of representation between the tokenization of words it has in its metadata in, um, and connecting that between a large language model like ChatGPT and the visual representation of words in image space. Remember, it's difficult. You need to first teach the computer to be able to recognize these tokenized text languages in the way that it understands in the sort of space of images that's invariant to things like font, color, size, shape, angle, these sorts of things. This would help, but I'm going to argue it needs more. It needs some sort of experience with the world that gives the images and text you're trying to use together to give it a consistent context. And as a result, 
my argument is you're not going to be able to do this with images alone. You're going to need more. And this is why I predict that AGI, this sort of generalized intelligence, artificial generalized intelligence, um, arguing that this will somehow be able to piece all of this together is looking in the wrong place. AI needs to first be able to experience the world in a similar way, or at least a reasonable way as humans do to be able to make these sorts of connections in a way that, you know, we as humans can resonate with. Um, other than that, I think it's very, very difficult. And yeah, you perhaps be able to do some things with brute force, but there are always going to be things like, you know, text in AI generated images that come up as these kind of weird edge cases where you can tell what it doesn't experience. So anyway, thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments and have a good one.